Hello and welcome to this edition of the Player Spotlight. I'm Tyler Rowland, and this is the fourth episode of the Player Spotlight that we have done on on audio. And this has helped expand my reach, of course, to players that I normally wouldn't be able to reach out to. You saw we have one on in Germany, and Zakiah Winfield. And with me today is somebody I've had the opportunity to call his games, a couple of them, since 2021. And Bowling Green player, former Bowling Green player, Mr. Basketball, and current EKU Colonel, Turner Vutry. And Turner, it's so good to see you here. And and first off, let's talk a little bit about your college career first off. Um, just kind of give an update on how you've been doing. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good to be on here. Uh, good to talk to you again. Um, well, yeah, man. I mean, we had a, um, you know, me personally, I feel like I made a, a big jump from a freshman to sophomore year, um, you know, just at, at uh, confidence wise and, you know, getting stronger and, uh, being able to, you know, know where I'm going to get my shots at and, um, stuff like that. But, you know, as far as team goes, we won the, uh, the first regular season conference tournament in 45 years. Um, so that, that was a big deal for us. Um, came up a little short in the, uh, conference tournament of our, you know, main goal of winning both, um, and getting to the NCAA tournament. But, um, you know, it was a, a very, very uh, memorable season for us um, and myself. You know, I'll, I'll never forget this team and, you know, never forget what, what we did. And, you know, so uh, this past year, it, it's, it's been great for me um, just growing as an individual on, the, on and off the court and, um, you know, being a part of such a special team here at EKU. Yes, and, and Turner, my gosh, you guys started something like I think three and eleven. What was the the yeah. point like during the year that you just knew this was going to turn around because you, you came back and I mean you certainly had a, a a masterful performance in the second half of the season as a team. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean we were I think that we had like a top fifty strength of schedule in non conference, you know. Um, we, we, but, but we, we struggled. We did, um, you know, and then right before conference play started, we played Alabama and Purdue back to back. And, um, you know, after those two games, it was kind of, you know, we had a, a players only meeting and it was kind of, you know, well, you know, forget everybody's stats, you know, it's, it's time to win, you know, and, um, it was kind of, you know, everyone coming together and saying, you know, we don't care who scores. We don't care about any of that. You know, we're going to go do something special. And we know that when you win, everyone gets recognized. It's not, you know, and I think that once we understood that and began to play not only with each other, but for each other, our whole season turned around. And uh, we started conference playoffs 7-0, and um, finished 12-4 and in conference and won the conference outright. Um, and, you know, I, I think that was the turning point was just, you know, starting to play for, for each other and, and not, not for ourselves. And, um, I think that that's really what basketball is all about. Let's talk a little bit about coach Hamilton with that. And of course, coach A.W. Hamilton, highly respected and I always yeah. liked coach Hamilton, but it was when I got to Hargrave military Academy and got to call some games for them. Just all the stories I heard seeing his picture on the wall hanging up there and seeing the national championship team that he had in postgraduate at Hargrave Military Academy. Talk a little bit about him and maybe something that you feel like you've learned and applied to your life from him. Yeah, so uh, we we actually had had a – he just hit the portal, but we had a guy on our team named Leland Walker who came from Hargrave. And when he came here, he was like, uh, man, at Hargrave, they think, you know, they believe that A-Dub is, you know, uh, like a, a myth. You know, they believe he's he's the man, the myth, the legend up there. And, you know, so we were, um, my freshman year, we were on our way to Liberty. And we stopped in, I think it's in Chatham, um, Virginia. And uh, so we stopped there at 8 and went to Hargrave and walked around a little bit. And, man, I mean, A-Dub's pictures everywhere. And, you know, it's. He's he's very respected there, and you know, rightfully so. 
but you know, I, I love I love playing for uh, Coach. Um, he's you know he's he's hard on you because he wants the best for you, and um, you know he's hard on you at practice, and you know, but he creates a lot of discipline, and um, as a player and off the court, um, you know, at practices he's he's really hard on us, but when game day comes around, he's, he's kind of like a a cheerleader for us, you know, he's, he's supporting us all the way. And um, I, I know that he's a coach that cares for us, uh, what type of people that we are and getting a degree and stuff like that and becoming the best basketball player that you can, you can become. Um, and I think that's something that I could carry onto my life outside of basketball would be the, the discipline aspect about, you know, showing up on time to everything, um, you know, not hitting that snooze button on your alarm, you know, when, when your alarm goes off, you know, get up, you know, just small stuff like that, you know, treating people with respect, you know, I could go on and on, but, you know, I think discipline is the, is the thing that I would think of when I think of A-Dub, um, is just creating discipline in your life. And when you need to get something done, you do it, you don't procrastinate. Um, and you know, when you got to create discipline for yourself, he talks a lot about winning the weight and you know what that means is, you know, making sure you're eating right, sleeping right, you know, don't put stuff in your body that you're not supposed to be putting in your body. Um, and, you know, that can carry on to farther things than just mm-hmm. basketball and can relate when you have, you know, a job after basketball. And so I, I really appreciate him teaching us stuff like that. What would you say, Turner, go, going back to your freshman year, which I know, I mean, you're going to be a junior next season, but going back to your freshman year, what would you say was the hardest, what was the hardest thing for you to adapt to when you got to EKU? I would say, you know, freshman year is tough because, net, you know, never in your life have you, you know, had to wake up, then you got weights, and then you got conditioning, and then you got class, and then you got an individual workout, and then you got practice, and then you got to get homework done and study hall and stuff like that. So I think that was a big thing for me is just, you know, managing my time and realizing that, you know, pri- my priorities have always been in right in life, but I feel like, like knowing that when you're a division one basketball player, there's not much of a social life and just accepting that, like that you have to put your priorities straight and you can't move them. You got to put them in line and you can't move them. Um, and I would say as far as on the court, I would say, you know, just, finding ways to get my shot off against bigger guys and guarding bigger guys because my size, you know, and, um, you know, I'm not the most athletic guy in the world and not the biggest guy in the world. So, you know, finding little, you know, just tricks of how to get open and get my shot off and have a quick release and, um, you know, using little like shot fakes and, um, you know, just trying to trick my defender and, and find ways to score and get in the lane and stuff like that. That's, that's awesome. And, um, and this year, um, looking at it, what is something you feel like that an area you feel like you grew in your game and as a sophomore, and what do you think you're gonna gonna shoot to take to the next level next season? Uh, so I think from my freshman to sophomore year, um, I think my freshman year I shot around 34% from three, and this year I shot around 44% from three. So that that was something that um, I, I really improved on was um, just my confidence. You know, I've always been a great shooter, but I think my confidence grew a lot by the work that I put in in the off season of, you know, just constantly, you know, shooting, getting shots up and, you know, at game speed and um, knowing what shots I'm going to get in the game and practice on those. And my confidence just grew a lot. And, um, and you know, also I think I like tripled or quadrupled my, my free throw attempts from, freshman to sophomore year, you know, just getting in the lane more and, you know, using shot fakes and getting pe- – drawing fouls mm-hmm. and getting to the line and stuff like that. So I feel like those two things are, are really, um, you know, what I improved on. And, then, you know, by next year I think I'm going to be a, a really good defender. You know, I've been working on a lot of, like, you know, lateral quickness stuff and getting my lower body stronger and more flexible and stuff like that. So, you know, but come next year I think I'm going to be a lot better defender and uh, I think that will just be – something that continues to keep me on the floor even more. Yes, and, and one of the players that 
you, you've encountered. And, and the first time I, I called a, a game for Turner was actually against Ashland. And, of course, had a, a great, what was it, a great deal to get to go down there to, to see Bowling Green. And then the next year you came to the AIT. And I know you and Colin Porter have – um, have been in contact and and everything. And what what's it like to to get to be at that level and to have played against them a couple of times, get to see somebody else from your home state and and like, like yourself, you're both both succeeding at a high level. Uh, yeah. So you know me me and Colin, um, we we connected um, back in the high school. Um, you know, I've always respected him as a player. Um, but you know, we we really connected on uh, our faith uh, in Jesus Christ. Um, we you know there was just things that we were talking about uh, as far as faith and how he lives his life, and um, you know even got some advice for him on you know how to live and um, what to stand for and stuff like that. Um, and he, I mean, he's a he's an unbelievable player. You know, I think he's one of the best point guards in the country. Um, and you know, you you can see that. You know, he's Last year that in the NIT, they were playing, you know, Villanova, Wisconsin, all those teams. And, you know, he was doing what he does against everybody else. And, um, you know, he always shows up um, and he's very consistent. I really respect that about him. But I, I respect even more the type of person that he is. Um, and it's, it's been really cool to, to play against him at, at uh, this level. Um, he's had a great school. He's had a great career. Um, my freshman year, he was he was all freshman in, in our conference on the all freshman team. Um, you know, he's it, – it's been great to play against him at this level and just see, you know, somebody else of, you know, my size and, you know, been the underdog our whole life and, and from Kentucky, you know, just to be out at the Division One level and, and producing at a high level like he is, is is something that's awesome to see. What stood out to me the most with that, Turner, was how you mentioned how – the first, the one, the first, the first thing you mentioned was how you connected on your faith in Christ. Talk so about your faith in Christ, and and you know just what that means to you. And of course, you know you and Colin. Um, I mean, being faith leaders, the importance of that. Yeah. So you know, I I think in, in today's world, you know, that there are some people that are you know kind of scared to get judged or you know shut down for what they believe in, but. Um, you know, I I think it's important for, you know, it, to to spread the word and um, you know, because you know, in reality, I know everybody says it, but I mean, it is the truth. You know, nothing would be possible without him. And you know, you you look at people like me and Colin, and you know, it's like, you know, at the, at that size, you know, how how are they doing stuff that that they're doing? And you know, it's it's really just hard work and 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 faith in Jesus. You know, and you know, and I I think in today's world, you know. We we really got to spread that because you know it it is a, a more lost world than it, it it ever has been and I think that's really important and um you know and and that that's just something that um, Colin stands for and I admire that about him and um, you know when I can connect with someone like that through basketball um, it's it's amazing to see because we have so much in common and what's an activity on campus maybe a club or. I know you're pretty pretty darn busy as it is up there, but yeah. um, what's something maybe or, or just something neat about where you're at right now with with school that um, something that you like to to do? Uh, you know, uh, I've actually been going to the driving range uh, a few times uh, with my roommate. You know, he's a he's a uh, a golfer. He he likes to golf. So uh, you know, I've been my my papa who uh, he passed away. Uh, my freshman year, uh, back in 2022 oh. in December, uh, and he, he golfed like every day of his life. Um, and you know, so I, I feel like it's, it's in my blood. So I feel like, you know, and a lot of people say there's a correlation between, you know, being able to shoot a basketball and, you know, golf, like Steph Curry's good at golf, Ray Allen's good at golf, you know, so it, it's something that, uh, you know, I might try to pick up. Uh, I've been to the driver range a few times, you know, trying to get, trying to get my swing where uh where I hit the ball straight, you know, and not shank it right all the time. So yeah, that, that golf has been uh something that I've kind of started to pick up and might uh pursue that even more. Nice. Uh, that's pretty neat to neat to learn. Talk talk about what you think about the NBA right now with with everything going on with the playoffs and everything. Yeah man. What's your, what's your take on that? 
It's uh, it, it's crazy, man. You know, you see guys like uh, Steph Curry and, you know, their dynasty kind of, you know, uh, struggling this year. You know, it kind of, you know, speaks to, you know, there's kind of a, a new generation coming up. Uh, you, you know, you see the Thunder, they're the youngest team in the in the league. I, I think mm-hmm. I saw back in the NCAA tournament where there was some team who had a the average age in the NCAA tournament that was older than the Oklahoma City Thunder. You know, they're so young, but they're – Pretty sure they're the one seed uh, in the West, so I mean that's no, that's that's crazy. I think it's a new generation coming up, um, you know. And I I think that the NBA is leaning towards more of a a skilled league than it ever has been. You know, um, I think that you know mm-hmm. in the past there's been some uh, like you know you win with strength and you know trying to bully teams and stuff. But I think nowadays it's more about you know shooting threes and and um, it's a numbers game, you know. So, you know, I think teams are trying to hit as many threes as they can get and get a lot of high IQ skill guys. And uh, I think that'll allow even, you know, uh, more overseas guys to be in the league. And um, so, yeah, I think there's a shift going on in the NBA. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I, I like it. You know, I like watching all the threes being shot and stuff like that. So it's, it's been cool to watch. Yeah, so that, and there's a coach talking about the name of Gates. You mentioned the international game, how in some of the European leagues they will – they will instead of because the, I mean the NBA you're going around you're playing oh gosh probably four or five games a week and some of the leagues from what I understand they'll go they'll practice five days a week and then play play one game a week. Yeah, you know I've always heard that you know a lot of overseas guys they kind of flip flop what Ameri- Americans do. You know they say that in America you play seventy five percent of the time and you work on your game twenty five percent of the time and they kind of flip-flop that overseas and, you know, they, they work on their game 75% of the time and they play 25% of the time. And I think that's what leads them to be so skilled and, you know, so smart and that they're taught the game the right way. And um, I think a lot, a lot of uh, people in in America could pick up on that. Um, Especially, you know, people like me who aren't, you know, extremely athletic and, you know, need a lot of skill to, to, to produce um, at a level like this. So, yeah, man, I mean, I think that uh, what the overseas guys are doing is is very smart, and uh, I think that we'll continue to see more and more overseas guys uh, enter the NBA. You mentioned, um, you know, having less, lesser skill and athleticism, so to speak. But um, when you, of course, I mean, you've always been known um, also for your work ethic tremendously. And um, when I interviewed you last time, Turner, it was before. You won the, the the Mr. Basketball Award in Kentucky, and how did it feel to you to hear the the words um, the, this year's Mr. Basketball, Turner Buttry? Oh man, I mean, just you saying it again gives me a little bit of chills. Um, but uh, no, I mean, it 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 really was a dream come true. You know, um, it is it is something that you know, growing up, I, I didn't really think about. You know, I never really imagined myself being in that position to win that. And um, that me winning that award is, is I think, a, a true testament to, you know, no matter what you're born with as far as athleticism or height, you know, if if you put your mind to something and, and you really just dedicate yourself and, and work, 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 and, you know, you will set yourself up to be in a great position. And, you know, you can't, you can't guarantee success with hard work, but you can put yourself in a position to be successful by working very hard. And, um, you know, hearing my name call was just, you know, I, I want to just, you know, sit there and cry. You know, I was, I was so happy, but, um, you know, it was, it was great, man. You know, that was one of the best days of my life. And, um, you know, it was truly a, an award that I earned and, you know, no one can ever take that from me. So it was, it was, you know, growing up, I'd always heard, you know, a lot of people just counting me out and, you know, saying what I can't do instead of what I can do. And, um, you know, I think that goes back to, you know, my parents talking to me and, you know, giving me a lot of confidence, you know, you can do anything that you want to do. And, you know, that that, that's, that was a big award to me, man. And I, I'll always uh, be thankful for that and, um, and remember that my whole life, obviously. So, yes. And, and what what would be other than that? What would be one of your favorite memories or games? And this could be at any point in your life um, playing basketball. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, I would say um, in the first round of the state tournament my junior year, I uh, I hit a shot from, I don't know, probably 70 feet. Um, and it got on Sports Center to be the number one play. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how I made that. I never will understand how that went in. But, um, you know, it was that was awesome. And I was very fortunate and blessed enough to, to be uh, mentioned as the – Top play on on Sports Center's top ten plays, so that was really cool. And I I think another one of my favorite games was um, my my first game at, as uh, here at EKU, just putting on that jersey and um, you know just being able to play and something that I've always wanted I've always wanted to play Division One basketball and just putting on that jersey for the first time running out that was that was a surreal moment for me because you know I've worked really hard to be in this position and. You know, that that's another memory that I'll always remember. Yes, and that's that's really cool to to hear and, and I, that's what I forgot about that with the with the shot that you had. I didn't realize that hit number one on sports center. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. And we talk about um what's a like we always hope to get to know you better and um talk about something, um, a neat fact about bowling green or something that you like to do when you're when you're back home uh yeah so um i think it's just a neat fact about me and bowling green is that um you know i i moved there my eighth grade year and um you know so i hadn't went there my whole life and um it was it was a it was kind of a culture shock for me you know um just uh being around a lot of good players and stuff um you know it was kind of it was a an adjustment um you know, trying to earn my way onto, you know, a, a top 10 program in the state. Um, and, you know, I, I did that and, and it was awesome. Uh, but, you know, when I'm home with my family, you know, um, I like to play video games with my little brother. Or, um, you know, we'll play family basketball games outside, you know, a horse or something or um, something like that. But, you know, I, I really just like hanging out with my family. Uh, my family means a lot to me. Um, I've, I've been raised to be uh, a big on family. And, um, you know, I'm incredibly thankful that my parents have raised me that way because uh, fa- family, you know, it's, it's very important. You know, uh, other than, you know, my faith, uh, you know, family's right there. Um, and so, you know, family's big to me, and uh, I'll always be appreciative of my family. Yeah, and let's talk about your little brother a little bit because if I remember right, he had some um, he had some interest in – he was big. If I remember right, I remember remember your dad posting about him having a strong interest in history. Yeah, uh, he he's he's like big into politics, man. Like he he uh, he like loves politics, man. Uh, but he's he's a big sports fan, and uh, big, yeah, he he likes his, his history. Um, he's uh, finishing up his junior year at Bowling Green High School right now, and. Um, you know he's he's got really good grades and uh, he's a he's a great kid and uh, he's very fun to be around. He he lights up any room that he's in. Um, and you know he he's really been a big supporter of me. You know he's he he's been there for me through everything. And um, you know he'll be the first person to see some negative about me on social media and you know oh I, I hate that person you know stuff like he, he wants to take up for me and stuff. So uh, but. Uh, you know he's he, he's awesome, and uh, you know I, I couldn't ask for a better little brother. That's awesome, man. And last question: Any shout outs you'd like to give? Uh, yeah. Um, you know I'd like to shout out my family, of course. Um, they are uh, they're they're great. Um, you know my dad, he, you know, he's got arthritis and everything. But the minute I ask, you know, you want to go to the gym, you know he hop up off the couch and yeah, let's go Re- rebound for me. And, um, he always says that he, he's the world's leading rebounder because he's rebounded so many shots for me. And, um, <laughs> you know, shout out my mom. Uh, she always, you know, is always making sure I'm doing the right thing on and off the court. Um, she raised me, uh, with lots of discipline and, um, you know, sometimes that's hard at a young age, but, uh, growing up now, you know, everyone says it, but you know, your mom's always right. Um, and you know, not, not all the people know, but my mom, she she was really good at, at shooting the basketball. Uh, she held the I don't know the single game uh, record at Allen County High School for threes made in a game for I don't know the longest time. I think she hit seven wow. or eight. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, and uh, my dad, he had hit seven in the game. So I, I come from a shooting family. Uh, so I'll shout them out for that. But, uh, but yeah, man, just uh, my family and, you know, not just my parents and my little brother, but, you know, cousins and, and everybody. They're, they're my, you know, every, they're always in my corner. And they're my greatest support system. Um, and, you know, obviously I want to shout out my, my teammates and uh, my, my uh, coaches. Um, you know, they, they, they're they awesome here at at EKU. Um, you know, we're, we're really building something special here. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that, that's about it. That's awesome. Well, Turner, we want to say thank you for being on, and we wish you the continued best and success. And be sure to stay tuned to, to check EKU's website and local media providers. Be sure to keep up with this EKU team. Coach Hamilton's had a lot of success there, no doubt about it. They look to bounce back this year. And we want to say thank you to, for tuning in today. God bless you, and we will see you soon. Good night, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.